Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where a boss makes a million dollar mistake. Our next Reddit post is from Zombies. Years ago, I worked at a certain big box pet store with employees in blue shirts and poorly maintained fish tanks. Back then, employees were required to tuck their uniform shirts into their khakis, with an exception for pregnant female employees, which I was at the time. I worked the registers with my untucked shirt with no issues for months while I was pregnant. When I was 8 months pregnant and just a few weeks shy of going on maternity leave, we got a new manager who was painfully clueless and stupid. Isn't that always the way? So one day, this manager calls myself and the other main cashier, who was also pregnant, into the office. The manager told us that we were fine cashiers, but our uniforms were lacking. The other cashier and myself were just like, huh? Because we both had our khakis, uniform shirts, and black sneakers. Everything was neat and clean, so we both had no clue what he was talking about. I asked him what he's talking about, and he replied that our shirts have to be tucked in. The other cashier and I have both been with the company for a while, so we're both super familiar with the uniform policy. So she and I both object and let him know that pregnant employees are exempt from the tucking policy. He waves his hand at us and says that we're incorrect and that all employees must tuck in their shirts. The other manager who was there acting as a witness chimed in that we were correct, but the clueless manager cuts the witness manager off and says he knows exactly what the policy is and that the previous management was just being lax. The other cashier and I shrug and leave the office to go tuck our shirts in. The clueless manager left for the day right after talking to us. Here's where the malicious compliance comes in. We did tuck our shirts in, but if you aren't familiar with pregnant fashion, you essentially have two options for pants. Option one is using a belly band on your existing pants or using pants with a belly band attached already. A belly band is essentially a very wide plastic strap that goes around your baby bump to hold your pants up, which essentially puts the top of your pants at your ribs. Option two is to do the hairband trick, which is to take an elastic hair tie and loop it through the buttonhole of your pants and around the button of the pants. This gives you a few extra inches of waist room in your pants to accommodate the baby bump. It also exposes your underwear and your lower abdomen since you can't zip your fly. Both options look absolutely ridiculous and are meant to be concealed under a shirt. And both of these options only look more ridiculous the more pregnant you are. And it's worth pointing out that we were both heavily pregnant at this time. So we both emerge, waddling gloriously from the back room after we tucked our shirts in. I had, <laughs> I had my shirt tucked into my belly band just below my boobs. <laughs> and the other cashier had her shirt tucked into her hairband closed pants, which was right below her belly with her leopard print underwear exposed. The clueless manager was already gone for the day, so he wasn't present to see our magnificent uniform compliance. He wasn't in for another two days, so he didn't see our dutiful compliance, but all of our customers and coworkers sure did. Our regulars asked why we had our shirts tucked in like that, and of course we obliged them. We explained that our clueless manager insisted that we tuck in our shirts to comply with uniform policy. For two full days, customer complaints to corporate about our treatment rolled in, and coworkers called the employee hotline to report this clueless manager. Our district manager was pissed about the whole thing, which we found out about on day three. On day three, which was the return of the clueless manager, he enters the store, and he sees the other cashier and myself with our beautifully ridiculous uniforms, and he asks why we're dressed like that. We just shrug and say, you told us to tuck our shirts in. He gets red in the face and beelines to the office. He calls us into the office immediately and starts going off on us for not taking the uniform policy seriously. Mid-tirade, the district manager arrives furious. She turned to us pregnant ladies and nicely told us to untuck our shirts and head back out to the floor, before turning to the clueless manager and going ballistic on him for enforcing something that we pregnant people are exempt from. It turns out, the clueless manager ruined the district manager's days off because of all the complaints that came in about the two pregnant people who were forced by a male employee to show their underwear and pregnancy attire in public due to an absurd uniform policy. The complaints weren't just about the manager, they were about the company uniform policy as well. Obviously, the customers didn't know about the real policy. All of these complaints had to be handled by the district manager ASAP because the sheer number of complaints in such a short time meant the regional manager was breathing down the district manager's neck to resolve this issue. The district manager forced the clueless manager to apologize to us and treat us to lunch. 
We also got stools to sit on at the register. The clueless manager was sent back to training and fired shortly after for another similar violation. I was on maternity leave, so I didn't get to wish him a farewell. And for those of you who are morbidly curious about the similar violation I mentioned, our clueless manager refused to special order a name tag that didn't have a magnet for an employee with a pacemaker. Because young people don't have pacemakers. The clueless manager also refused to let this employee at least move the magnetic tag to the other side of his chest where it wasn't sitting directly over top of his pacemaker. Wow, imagine dying from, I guess, heart failure because your stupid boss makes you put a magnet over your pacemaker. Imagine getting sued because you forced a guy with a pacemaker to put a magnet over his heart. Oh my god, what an idiot. Our next Reddit post is from Dishwater Dreams. When I was in high school, I got a part-time job as a hostess at an Italian restaurant with a friend of mine. The restaurant was only open five days a week for dinner. The restaurant was fairly new, so it was already filling every table every night because the food was amazing. In addition to my friend and I being the only two hostesses, I was friends with the bus boys, half the waiters, and a dishwasher. The owner's son was the floor manager, and with the success of the restaurant, he started to implement new changes. He said that everyone must look presentable and in uniforms at all times. No dirty uniforms, even for the busboy. He was rather rude to the employees and would hover and take over our jobs right in front of the customers, apologizing for our inability to do our jobs correctly. However, everyone there was fantastic at their jobs. The dishwasher even found creative ways to stay clean and tidy. The straw broke one night when my friend and I were both working the hostess stand on a packed Saturday night. The manager walked up to us and said that our hair was not compliant with dress code. Both of us had our hair pulled back in the requisite buns. However, we both had a few stray wisps. You know, those tiny little new hairs around your face. Never mind that it was a hot August and we were all working as a team like crazy to make sure the night ran smoothly. We were sharing duties like bussing tables and running food and drinks. The manager loudly fired us on the spot in front of the entire restaurant and front staff. He then said that we were required to continue to work for two weeks and train our replacements. I asked, are we fired? He said yes. And I said, being fired means that we don't work for you anymore. We walked out, punched our cards, and went to change out of our uniforms. When we left the dressing room, there was a line of people waiting to change, including the busboys, half the waitstaff, and the dishwasher. They were all so mad about what happened that they quit on the spot. No one liked the job anyway. We all went to IHOP to eat, and we were soon joined by the rest of the waitstaff and the line cooks. So all that was left of the entire restaurant staff was the bartender, the owner slash cook, and the manager. I later heard from the owner that he just shut the restaurant down. Because the only reason why he started the restaurant in the first place was to give his son a legacy from the family business in Italy, and he decided that his son couldn't handle it. Oh my god, what an idiot! You're fired, but you have to keep working the rest of your shift. And if I don't, what are you gonna do? Fire me? Our next Reddit post is from Formal Negotiation. I used to work as a solo pastor of a medium-sized church in a large southern city. One unhappy side effect of being a solo pastor is that when your phone rings, you answer it, even if you don't recognize the number, since you have no idea how important the call could be. It could be a church member's grandkid, whom you've never met, calling to tell you that Miss Bessie has been diagnosed with some horrible disease. Or it could be a church member who just wants to talk your ear off for two hours. So earlier this evening, my phone rings, and since old habits die hard, I answered it. Hello? Hey, what are you up to? I want to be clear before I proceed that I did not recognize this lady's voice, but I just assumed that she was a former church member or a member's kid or grandkid or something, so I was cordial. Not much, honestly. I actually just walked through the door with some food. How about you? I'm hanging out with Becky. To be clear, I don't know a Becky. I said, great, I'm sorry to have to ask this, but with whom am I speaking? I don't recognize your voice, and I have no idea who Becky is. Ladies and gentlemen, apparently that was the wrong thing to say. Darren, you know who this is. This is Jesse. Well, Miss Jesse, I hate to break this to you, but my name isn't Darren, and I don't know any women named Jesse. I think that you've called the wrong number. No, I didn't. This isn't funny, Darren. Did you leave your ringer on again and you're worried that your wife is going to hear us talking? Ma'am, I'm very sorry, but I know that you've got the wrong number. 
I want to come over there and tell her all about us and how you've been screwing me behind her back for two years. I'm sick of this garbage. Cue malicious compliance. You know what? That would be great. By all means, come to my house, wake my wife up, and tell her all about our torrid sexual affair. I'm leaving now. In the background, I can hear her start her car. Okay, see you soon. So, for context, five months ago, I discovered that my wife of 10 years started cheating on me 18 months into our marriage. She racked up a grand total of 16 affairs in a decade. Somewhere in my immediate area, a man's wife was just awakened by her husband's side piece banging on the front door. She deserved to know what kind of man she married. I'm just sorry that I can't be a fly on the wall for this very special episode of the Jerry Springer show that just started in her driveway. Our next Reddit post is from White Lady. My vacation credits expire next month, so I requested five days off hoping to go home to my family to get some rest. Only one of my requested vacation days got approved, and it was in the middle of the week. The reasoning was that we were short-staffed, as usual. I suddenly had a very bad flare-up of arthritis in the beginning of last week. I could barely sit up, and walking up the stairs to get to my workstation, I work at home, is out of the question. So I took a day off, and my boss said, Okay, that's fine, but we're gonna have to cancel your vacation leave, since you're going to rest anyway. It's not like I had any rest when I was writhing on my bed in pain. Spite empowered me, and I managed to get to a hospital with my last bit of strength to get my fluids drained. I felt a lot better, but I was in so much pain that my doctor seemed to take pity on me and gave me five days of rest. He told me to just contact him if I needed more. I was only planning to rest for a day or two, but I ended up having a whole week to myself feeling much better. I was even able to go home. The best part is that it was all paid leave since I also have plenty of sick leave credits and there's nothing they can do about that. Our next Reddit post is from Rustic Whiskey. I worked at a company that gave out exorbitant amounts of vacation. Anyone who worked there for over 25 years received 8 weeks of vacation and 2 weeks of personal time. This was a family owned company, but it was rather large. We ran 3 shifts, totaling over 250 people. Enter Jimmy. Jimmy was a grizzled old man, and he started at the company when he was just 20. Jimmy was also one of the few people who knew how to make a specific part for our product. It was just him and one other higher up in the office. One day, the company owner comes out and announces that he's selling his business to a corporation. He's older and he's ready to retire, and he promises that there will be very little change and he wishes us all well. The new company comes in and immediately goes after many of the great benefits that we had. The first thing they do is they cut everyone's max vacation down to four weeks and completely got rid of personal time. Anyone who was maxed out had until December 31st of that year to use it up, and they wouldn't pay it out. Then the new owner started cleaning house, firing anyone who was close to retirement, including Jimmy's backup. But they also got rid of one very important rule. You no longer have to get vacation approved. You can just call in and take it. Jimmy is pissed, and they know it. They realize that Jimmy is the only one in the factory that can do his job now, so they hire a new kid for him to train, most likely to permanently replace Jimmy. So Jimmy does what anyone would do. He calls in on the first training day for the new hire and lets us know that he's going to take all of his personal time off at once. And he promptly takes 10 weeks off. We had a large supply of the parts that he made, so it wasn't too unnerving. But for 10 weeks, Jimmy went and applied to other jobs, found one, and started. Fast forward 10 weeks, and it's the day that Jimmy is supposed to return. He doesn't. For two days, they try calling him, and they even go to his house. But he's nowhere to be found. Finally, on day three, he calls and quits, and they lose their minds. The parts that he makes are specialized and patented by the original founder. You can't just hire someone off the street to make them. What eventually happened was they had to contract the original owner to come in and teach him new hires how to make them. And when he found out what they had done, it pissed him off. The last I heard, he charged them a seven-figure contract to teach them how to produce the parts. And they had to either pony up or close down. Moral of the story is, don't screw with people's vacation time. Honestly, those new owners had it coming. If your entire factory hinges on two people, and you fire one and piss off the other, what do you expect to happen? 
That was r slash malicious compliance. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.